Welcome to another Todd's Two Minute Tech Tip Tuesday. Brought to you by the National RV Training Academy. The largest hands-on RV training academy in America. Hey, before we get to the video, which I know this is the reason why you're here, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. That way you don't miss anything. Hit the subscribe button now. Thank you. Now, back to our Tech Tip Tuesday. This is from Michael Freely. All right, um, question. Uh, I see a dude on the internet saying you should put anode rods in Atwood water heaters after they are four or five years old. Is this really necessary? Not no, but hell no. Okay. I don't know <laughs> why we're doing this. Okay. People are overthinking this. Atwood Dometic water heaters, um, they are made of aluminum. And aluminum is not susceptible to the um, uh, buildup of these minerals, right? So the reason why we use anode rods is because whenever we get water from the city and everything else, there's a lot of minerals and that mineral will begin to build up, right? We use the water, what stays behind is the minerals. Well, that mineral will begin to eat into um, the casing, uh, especially if it's gonna be a steel cased uh, water heater. So we put in what we call a sacrificial rod, which is an anode rod. It's just a less noble metal. Typically it's gonna be magnesium. Sometimes it can be, be aluminum, which is kind of funny, and zinc, but that's a less noble metal and it takes the hit from that corrosion buildup, turns it into something else, okay? So it's there to protect. You don't need that protection because if you ever open up um, an Atwood water heater, it is completely 100% aluminum. The only thing the only thing inside that aluminum structure is gonna be your heating element that may not be aluminum, right? That is metal, your heating element, and then maybe um, your PNT valve up top, right? That's a brass, okay? You're gonna get some buildup up there and you're gonna get some buildup on your water heater heating element, okay? Putting in an anode rod does not fix the situation, but it also creates a problem. The reason why Atwood Dometic um, water heaters come with a plastic drain plug is that's a life safety issue, okay? Once this pressure builds up too much, around 150 PSI, the, the threads on that plastic will fail, pop open, water comes out, saves that water heater from having a possible explosion from too much pressure, right? Now you still have your PNT valve, but that's also there. The reason why I'm saying four to five years old is because after that, the warranty is gone. You put one in, the problem that we have with aluminum is it doesn't like to work with other metals. It's too dissimilar. And what happens on the drain plug, right? Now this is a serviceable area. In other words, we gotta open this up. We gotta take out that drain plug at least once, maybe twice a year to properly just check the condition of that tank. Well, when you put in an anode rod, an anode rod, you know, typically those threads are not made of aluminum, but they're going to be made of some type of steel or derivative of steel. And you put that in there, steel and aluminum will actually create galvanic corrosion and that thing will begin to seize up. Well, this is a service port right here. And so every time you sit there and try and open that up, the more times you try and open that up when it's seized, you're going to end up really messing up your threads, your aluminum threads. Now, aluminum is kind of a malleable metal. It's going to fail over time. So we don't ever put any type of steel um, or steel byproduct in that aluminum threads. And I get it. People are going to say, well, what about if you put Teflon tape? That takes away a lot of it. Oh, a lot of it, but not all of it. Okay. So don't listen to the dude on the internet. Listen to the beard on the internet. Just don't do it. Okay. There, it really serves no purpose, and the better thing to do is to flush your system once or twice a year, and if there is any buildup, you could take out both your water heater heating element and your PNT valve and put them in vinegar and let it sit, and that'll get rid of that, okay? Then you put it right back in, and that's a lot more convenient than putting in a useless water heater um, um, anode rod. By the way, they purposely make that access port, if it's more than four years old, it's only a 15 16 inch, uh, I'm sorry, it's a half inch uh, thread. All of the threadings for um, your anode rods are three quarter inch. So they had to make a special half inch threaded anode rod, little be stubby guy. Don't use it. Simply not needed. 
Man, that, that took two minutes, but I still got one more question here. All right, this is what it says. Um, I have a Schwintech, I have Schwintech slides and I was told not to lube them. Should I follow your recommendation of dry lube on the RV uh, or the RV tech that has told me not to lube them at all? Well, let's kind of go over that, okay? It's kind of a catch-22. The Schwintech is made of aluminum and aluminum is not susceptible to uh, any type of uh, rust, right? So lubing them for that purpose is not needed, okay? And if you actually open up the manual to Schwintech, it says that it is not needed. It doesn't say don't do it. However, there's a proper application. If you watch my video, all I am doing is cleaning the tracks. What you don't want to do is actually spray into, um, beyond the tracks, into where we actually have the motor. Now, the motor does not need to be looped, and it's going to gum it up. Not only that, the, the little um, uh, sprocket on there is going to be kind of a plastic. It's not all that great, okay? I mean, the head is plastic, but the threads are still metal. What I'm talking about in cleaning them is whenever you're looking at your slides, the Schwintech, and you see schmutz inside, dirt, buildup, everything else. The reason why I have you use a dry lube is it, 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 it works, you do a two-step process where you use a penetrating lube and toothbrush and clean out those tracks, come back with the dry lube to try and pull out all that oil, okay? Is it needed? Well, if your tracks are clean, you don't need to spray it, okay? However, I've hardly ever met, you know, a Schwintech slide a year or more older where it doesn't have schmutz inside. And that schmutz will, uh, schmutz, let me say it right, that schmutz will eventually end up on that motor sprocket. So when I'm saying clean that out, I'm saying clean it out. Now, you don't have to use the dry lube. I mean, another thing you do is soap and water. Get some simple grain in a toothbrush, right, and clean out that schmutz and let it dry. That takes a while, right, because now you got to let it dry. We don't want to... Granted, I mean, putting it in wet's not going to hurt that motor too much. What we don't want is all that buildup, okay? Dry lube, totally fine. Just don't spray it. Don't open up the um, side, uh, uh, what do we call that? That's the uh, blade <laughs> blade seal and spray in there. Because a lot of people want to do that. Don't do that. That is off. But right here where you see the Swintec slide, if it's dirty, you got to clean it. Dry lube, right? Using kind of an ether, right? evaporates really quickly. You spray it, scrub it, spray it, dry. Good to go. It's about cleaning the track. There's your tech tip. All right, before you get to the bloopers, which is why you're here in the first place, the RV industry needs thousands of RV technicians and inspectors, and now is the perfect time to do that. If you want to make more money or have more control over your time, Go ahead and click the link below. Or if you just want to learn how to fix your own RV, got something for you there. Head over to rvtechcourse.com and get started today. Now for the reason that you're at the end of the video, roll the bloopers. Hey, I'm back with more questions that you got. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I've been. <laughs> hey, I'm back with more questions. Oh, I'm not back with questions. You're back with questions. I'm here to answer your questions. All right. Now, well, there's your bloopers. Right off the bat. All right. Yay. And you see schmutz inside. That schmutz will, uh, schmutz, let me say it right. Water heater. Um, um. Should we keep going with that one or should it be at its own? Oh, we're going to keep going. Schmutz. Schmutz. Like time. schmutz. schmutz. Yeah. It's dirt. Grease. Grime. Build up, right? Schmutz. Yeah. Whatever you want to call it. <laughs> 